Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Kashrus, presented by the Kashrus Awareness Project in conjunction with Torah Anytime. Today, I am joined by Rabbi Akiva Niehaus, Rabbinic Coordinator of Liquor at the CRC and Director of Kashrus Operations at the CRC. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. Now, I mentioned your liquor uh, title at the CRC first because today we'd like to discuss with you the topic of whiskey. I know it's a very broad topic. We'll try to address as much as we can. Uh, and I want people to be able to walk away from this conversation with a real understanding of the difference between bourbon, Irish whiskey, and scotch. And then we'll talk about the, the, the cautious ramifications of each. So take us through, first of all, what is the difference for the layman, the person who doesn't know the difference, not one of these uh, big experts who only drinks bourbon or only drinks scotch, or only drinks Irish whiskey, what are the differences between the three? Yeah, great question. So whiskey is basically a cereal grain, like barley, corn, or wheat, rye, anything like that, which is turned, which is turned into sugar, and it's fermented, and then it's distilled in order to separate the alcohol. And then it's aged, aged in, in barrels. And for many, for many years. For right? many years, that's right. But it, depending on which region it's made in, it can have very different flavors and, more importantly, different regulations. So let's start with bourbon. Bourbon, by law, needs to be made in the United States. And it's actually a misnomer that people think that it has to be made in Kentucky. Kentucky, okay. Because it's simply That's, not true. Okay. It can be made in any state of mm -hmm. the United States. So it's a protected name to be made it. Now, according to United States law, it needs to be at least 51% corn. And the balance could be any type of grain. Very common, they use wheat, rye, or something similar. But it's, it has to be 51% corn. Now, the aging process, which is very important to this conversation, is that by law, it has to be aged in new charred oak barrels. Well, if it's a new barrel, that presents very little cautious problems, and we'll talk about them more later on. It's just a fascinating thing. How what does that mean, by the way, new charred oak barrels? So they take the barrels made out of oak wood, okay. and they char it, which is a fascinating process. They take a fire and put it inside, and literally, it catches fire. I had the, the great privilege of seeing this many times. It's a fascinating experience. Uh -huh. It literally catches on fire, and then they put it out. And, and then it gives the, a smoky flavor? Is well, that it, it could give smoky, but more importantly, it, it sort of tempers the barrel, because you're using oak. Oak is wood. It's a natural uh -huh. wood. It gives all sorts of negative sorts of flavors, and therefore it tempers it and also acts as a filter. And it's just fascinating how this is such a help for us as, as you didn't keep cautious, that they're not allowed to use wine barrels like they do for other whiskey, which we'll talk about soon. And it's some sort of, uh, the, the, the barrel lobbyists made mm -hmm. put this into law that has to be used new charred oak barrels, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have that problem. Now, moving on to other regions in the world, uh, scotch, for example. Scotch has to be made in Scotland. And there, um, there's different rules. It has to, if you're gonna do a single malt whiskey, which means simply that it has to be 100% barley malt and has to be made in the same distillery. Blended Scotch whiskey has, is, is much looser regulated and therefore they can get away with using uh, uh, different types. They don't have to use barley malt, they can use other grains like wheat. And they, um, it's not as, definitely not as regulated, they can be from multiple distilleries, et cetera. Uh, and that's where we get into the question of sherry casks. Mm -hmm. So there's no issue with casks when it comes to bourbon. Correct. To be clear. Correct. With scotch, on the other hand, it's looser. What, now, sherry casks, I know people, when they, when they talk about this topic, there's always a chuva from Reb that Correct. people talk about. Um, what, walk us through, again, uh, give us a primer on, on what, the, what the conversation is. Sure. So sherry cask is actually very complicated, Sugya. And we don't have time to go through it in depth. There are plenty of uh, nice, uh, well-written manuals on that and um, a sherry cask is not cherry it's sherry with an s it's a type of wine which is made in spain it's a fortified wine which means that it's very high alcohol and they supplement the the grape wine with like for with uh, distilled alcohol to get a very high high alcohol volume mm -hmm. the sherry casks is a is a barrel a cask not a casket it's a cask and they take the barrels which are used to age, mature this non-kosher wine, 
and then they send it to Scotland in order to be further used to age their whiskey. Mm -hmm. Now, just a little background here. Um, I would say is like maybe somewhere like 30 years ago, let's say, they had changed the law in the European Union to say that they can no longer ship sherry casks to Scotland, to England, in order to bottle it there. Basically, is they were shipping these huge barrels full of wine to England, Scotland, and bottling it there. They said, no, it has to be bottled on site. So they said, on site where? In Spain. Uh -huh. So how are we going to get these barrels to Scotland? To ship a, an empty barrel like that would be a fortune. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Scotch manufacturers need a huge supply of barrels, and it just dried up, literally. So they turned to the bourbon manufacturers. Like we said, according to United States law, they can only age it in new charred oak. So what do you do with a bourbon barrel? Once it's used. Once it's once. used. I never thought of that. Okay. So they send it to Scotland. They send it to Scotland to be used, used. in the making of scotch? Correct. Wow. Because there, they don't have that restriction of new charred oak. They can use any type of oak barrel. Mm -hmm. So... But it doesn't have that sherry flavor. Exactly though. right. And that's exactly what happened. The consumer started noticing something's off. Uh -huh. It's missing something. And they, they, they eventually figured out that it was the sherry wine that was, that was absorbed the flavor. that was given the flavor. So it wasn't just a cask. Exactly. They needed a certain type of cask. Correct. And I, what, what was their, what was their um, solution for so that? So at that point, they said, we got to get back our sherry casks. And they started shipping them for no reason, other than the used for scotch, to Scotland. And they actually left some wine in there to keep it moist and some, fresh. Uh -huh. And they, they get to Scotland, and then they use it. But at this point, now we have the, the question. Does the wine, which was used, this non-kosher wine, it's the Ainesa or Staminum, uh, it's, which is absorbed in the walls of that barrel, the cask, how does it affect the kosher scotch, which is stored within? Right. Now, first of all, does every would you know by looking at a bottle of scotch if it's made in a sherry cask? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. We actually have a good prop over here. Um, so this is actually the Glen Fittich 15. Is there a different way to pronounce it? <laughs> so we were schmoozing before our viewers <laughs> that uh, the right way to pronounce it is Glen Fittich. Glen Fittich. Or Fittich. Yeah, because it's, right? it's a Gaelic uh, pronunciation. So that's funny because, uh, you know, in the, in the from world, everyone refers to it as Glen yeah, Fittich. Exactly. But okay. When people call me and they ask about the Glen Fittich, I'm half tempted to correct them in the name, but uh, I, I let it go. <laughs> Anyways, we're looking at this so bottle. Pr pronunciation aside. Exactly. Glen Fittich 15. And I'm actually reading here the label, and it says, This warm and spicy single malt has matured for 15 years in bourbon, new oak, and sherry casks. Mm. So it says it right there on the label. So that you know straight off that this is at least partially matured in a sherry cask. Right. So, so everyone likes to say at this point, there's a Jew of Ramayshim. And there is a Jew of Ramayshim in the first Chilak of Yerdea. And there it says a very similar Shiloh. He's talking about if you actually put, if there's wine which is actually added to whiskey, what are the cautious implications of that? Now, that should strike you right off the bat. By law, by United Kingdom law, you're not allowed to add wine to scotch. Right. So what's the shot? What's he talking about? And the answer is he's talking about Canadian whiskey. In Canada, by law, they are allowed to add wine directly to the whiskey, up to a certain amount. Mm -hmm. So then Ramesh was asked the question, if you have this Canadian whiskey or maybe even something called American whiskey, not bourbon, American whiskey, which you can add wine to, what's the cautious of it? And Ramesh goes through the Shiloh and he explains that if it's minimal enough that it can be bottle, there's a special quirk in halacha that it doesn't need to have the regular bittel b'shishim, which means 60 times the volume. You can even get away, according to many places, with bittel b'shesh, that's only six times the volume. Ramesh says, if it's minimal enough, it's fine. Okay. But here, it's a different child for two reasons. First of all, the wine, they're not adding wine. Now, parenthetically, there are rumors that they actually keep the wine in there and don't spill it out mm -hmm. before they fill it up. Like, like I said, they have to keep some wine in there to keep it moist, and they may not spill and the, it. And somehow they could get away with that despite the regulations. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Um, but they, they don't... Uh, the they definitely they, don't clean it out. They right? do not clean out. So the way they skirt this issue is by using a fresh cask, which the wine is fresh and in the in the walls. So it's a different Shiloh. Now, the reason it's actually somewhat worse is because of something called kavush, which means that it's absorbed. And according to many places, it's absorbed. Yeah, and it's absorbed right. in the full thickness of the wall. 
a different topic for a different time. But mm -hmm. the point is that there are, that tshuva is very relevant to us, but not directly. It's actually much worse. And the second reason why... Which, which is worse? The scotch is worse because it's actually maybe absorbed in the full thickness of the barrel, and believe it or not, believe it or not... And that would be a greater amount correct. than, even a, than just the wine itself being added. Correct. When everyone hears this, they say it's impossible. We did the mathematical calculations. Uh -huh. I, I spoke to four different mathematicians, and they all agreed that, believe it or not, the ratio of the wine absorbed in the full thickness of the barrel, which is over an inch thick, is only about four to one, 4.25, somewhere in that region, not even six times, for sh forget shishim. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, it's worse in that you may not have the level of bitzel required, basically there's too much wine to make it. To make, make a bottle, even according to the, the lean, and lean, lean and opinion that you referred to before. Correct. Okay. And also is this concept that, you know, they tried to move away from it and they brought it back because they, want, they specifically want the flavor. They specifically mm -hmm. want it. And therefore, that could seriously make it worse. Mm -hmm. So, sherry cask so, are out? Is that, is that the psak? So, I'm not going to say that because there are ways around it. Um, we can't go into now, but it may be minimal enough to actually be negligible. The way just there is an opinion that says that it's only absorbed in the thinnest layer, a kate klip, it's called, uh -huh. and therefore maybe bottle. Or there's other way around it to say that it's actually nice in town, lafkam, that the addition of the wine flavor actually ruins it as a which, which is which is hard, hard to understand because why in the world would the manufacturers correct. use such casks and it's even and ten, it's even 10 times the cost a sherry cask versus a bourbon cask right, so, so that's hard. it's hard to hear to say it's nice and tom right. Gum, it's, right it's not logical it, well it's there is a gemara and a shulchan that discusses something similar may not be exact but okay. there are ways around it therefore because of the issue it is a position of crc and many other cautious organizations that one should stay away from, from scotch, which is aged in sherry cask, if it's stayed on the label and they're proud of it, it should stay away from it. Okay, so we spoke about bourbons, we spoke about scotch, we spoke about sherry casks, which like you said, you recommend to, to be careful about. Obviously, I'll reiterate that uh, people could consult the CRC liquor list if they're unsure about these things. Uh, I mentioned before Irish whiskey. How, how does Irish whiskey differ from bourbon and scotch. So in, in, until a couple of years ago, Irish whiskey had very different regulations than everything we said, and was recently changed to actually very closely mirror the laws of scotch. Um, so therefore, I would say at this point, and obviously the difference is that it has to be made in Ireland, not Scotland. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's, it's, in, in, it's basically the same regulations. So um, scotch whiskey, the only issue would be is the fact that it may be aged in sherry casks. And like we said before, those, that's a serious concern and one should stay away from it. Mm -hmm. How can a consumer identify what is a sherry cask and what is not? Sure, I'll give you some things to look out for. Look out for bottles which say sherry, Madeira, Port, Oloroso, or, or other wine casks. Double, triple matured or finished, European or French casks. All these are possible indications of problematic bottles. Okay, thank you so much. Um, any final word on this topic? Well, I, I would say is that, oh, I want to throw in one thing about bourbon. Maybe we'll talk about it more at a different time. Okay. Is that uh, there is a, a very serious potential issue of Chama Chav or Lava Pesach. Okay. Um, we could talk about more in a different segment, different time. And that has, definitely has to be addressed. But Canadian whiskey, like we said, which can literally have wine poured in, it definitely should have Ashkacha. Mm -hmm. And you would know that basically by looking at the bottle. You see made in Canada. Right away, that Correct. should be a red flag. It's right? Canadian whiskey, it's called. Canadian, it's called Canadian whiskey. Right. Okay, that's the giveaway. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us again. Appreciate this conversation. Thank you.